Greetings, my name is Kerry and this is Kerry Louise Reads. Now you may have noticed that my uploading has been somewhat sporadic over the last few months. I'm going to link back to my life update video that I posted a couple of months ago to give the background of that but long story short, chronic illness massively impacting on how I managed to film and particularly edit. Editing requiring a lot of concentration these days and I don't always have the energy to do it. So we will we'll be continuing with the somewhat sporadic uploading as I'm filming this kind of towards the end of August and in September I go back into college full time and will be preparing for my upgrade viva for my PhD. So who knows how much time I'll actually have to film and to edit but I enjoy making videos. It's a nice little side hobby and actually has been quite influential in helping me choose my PhD topic so I want to keep doing it. All that to say I'm not going to be doing stats videos for the last four months that I haven't been really filming for. I'm going to try and be getting back into that for the rest of the year but we'll see how that goes. So today's video, <laughs> if you're ready for it, I'm not entirely sure I am, is a very quick wrap up of everything I've read in the last four months. So that's all the books I've read between the beginning of April and the end of July. So I'm not going to talk in a lot of detail about most of these but we're just gonna get on with it and we're gonna get through these very quickly. So without further ado, let's just go into it. The first book I finished in April was Caravel by Stephanie Garb. I picked this up as part of the Last to Read book club, which is hosted by some of my friends. I'll link to their Discord for you. I did not enjoy this book. I gave it two stars. It was quite big on booktube, a few years ago and so I'm sure you're quite familiar with the concept but it's like this kind of fantasy town carnival I don't know I was hoping for night circus vibes it's like budget night circus anyway didn't enjoy it got really frustrated particularly with the main character and one of my least favorite tropes happened towards the end and I'm not gonna say what it is because it's a bit of a spoiler but yeah two stars yeah not carrying on with the series. Next I read The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. So this was for Space Sirens Book Club. I will link our live show of it in the description for you so you can go and check out more of our thoughts. This was quite chunky, quite long. It made me realise that war-based fantasy is not my thing. I read fantasy for magic. This didn't have enough magic for me in it. There were kind of hints of magic. I ended up giving it three stars. I don't think I'll carry on with the series. It's inspired by Chinese history. Like, that was interesting. <laughs> There's going to be a couple more Chinese history inspired fantasies on this list. This was actually probably my least favourite of the ones I read in this time period. But yeah, it was alright. If you like epic war based fantasy, you'll probably like this. I, as I say, prefer more magical fantasy and less battles. This was a lot of battles. So yeah, check out our live show for more on this if you want it. I gave it three stars. I will also say at this point, some of these books I borrowed from the library or from friends, so those have been returned, some my ebooks, and some, if they're related to my studies, then they are maybe in my study. <laughs> so I don't have them to hand, or any books I'm not holding up, I will put pictures up of. Okay, on with the books. The next one that I finished was called Esther Royal Beauty. This was from a series called Dangerous Beauty, their inspirational romance by Angela Hunt. One of the books in the series, which is called Bathsheba Reluctant Beauty, is one of the books that I will be analysing for my PhD. So I was trying to read a bit more from the author to get more of an idea of her writing style. This one's based on the story of Esther from the Bible. It's a bit of a complex story and in some ways I liked how she handled it, other ways I didn't. Ended up giving it three stars. I will say compared to some of the other authors I'm looking at for my PhD, Angela Hunt is actually an accomplished writer but some of the way she handles the biblical stories can be a little bit problematic but again not quite as bad as some of the other ones I'm studying. So yeah I gave it three stars. I've got a couple more books by Angela Hunt to read and yeah we'll see how that goes. Next I finished Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This I was borrowing from a friend. This was my second book by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I read, what's it called? The Weird Mushroom one. Mexican Gothic. We read that for Space Irons a couple of years ago and I really like her writing style so I was quite pleased to pick this one up. This was Mexican inspired fantasy I believe about 
gods and kind of the battle between two ancient gods and how an ordinary Mexican girl gets caught up in that and I thought it was quite fun I quite enjoyed it I gave it four and a half stars not quite a perfect book but definitely kept me intrigued kept me reading so yeah really enjoyed that one the next book that I finished was Paddington Goes to Town by Michael Bond this is the eighth book in the Paddington Bear book series I really really love these books I gave this one five stars as I pretty much give all of these books this had some really fun stories in it I mean generally Paddington is just adorable I've got a few more books in this series to go you'll probably see me talking about more from this series again in the future just really relate to Paddington Bear on so many levels so yeah I gave that one five stars the next book that I finished was A Feast for Lent by Delia Smith this was a series of daily bible readings and reflections written by chef Delia Smith who apparently is Catholic and I didn't know but yeah someone gave this to me or I picked it up from the college book sale or something like that I can't remember but it was a really nice way to focus I was reading it actually mainly in the evenings it was a quite nice way to focus my mind during Lent in preparation for Easter so that was that one I gave it four stars next I finished The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan this was lent to me by a friend it follows four Chinese American families across two generations of the families. The chapters are partly told by the mothers and then the daughters and it was really really beautiful. I gave it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it and I've actually since bought another book by Amy Tan which I haven't read yet but I really liked her writing and her take on how culture and heritage affects family relationships and how children whose parents have moved from one culture to another can sometimes feel a bit caught between the two cultures. I thought it was really beautifully written, really really enjoyed it and will definitely read more by Amy Tan. So I gave that one four and a half stars. I do realise I'm going through these quite quickly is because I don't want this to be a massively long video. So next I finished Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the second book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. I enjoyed it about as much as the first one. I found the romance a bit more believable in this one. I really liked the male protagonist whose name I can't remember who was a hopeless romantic and the concept of him being really enamoured of romance novels and I thought it was really nice to have that as a male protagonist who was the romantic one but also so the one who loved romance novels. I've actually noted down a couple of quotes from that book of things that he says about why romance novels are important to him because that is kind of one of the themes that I'm looking at in my research. So that was really cool to read that and what I like about these books is that they centre protagonists who haven't always been centred in romance novels. So in this case, it was a plus size bisexual black woman and a Muslim male protagonist with mental illness. And I thought that was really, really great. I do kind of feel like if I reread Chloe Brown now, I would read it slightly differently because I have the same medical condition as Chloe Brown and I didn't know it at the time when I read that book. I'm looking forward to actually reading the third one in this series. I gave this one three stars which I think is the same as I gave Chloe Brown. They're just a touch too smutty for me. <laughs> I don't like a lot of smut in my books, it's just not my taste. Some people love that and really rate these books but just for me it's just slightly too much but there are other elements of these stories that I really do like. So yeah, gave that one three stars. Next I reread The Cursed Hunter by by Bethany Atasada. This is one of the series on my series I want to finish list which I will link for you if you're interested in seeing that because I only posted that fairly recently at time of filming. This was a reread for me, this is the third book in the series so I've now just got the final concluding book to go. Hopefully we'll be getting to that fairly soon. This is my favourite one from the series, I gave this five stars. It's loosely a Beauty and the Beast retelling but it's a very different take on that story and each of the stories in this book are based on fairy tales but different interpretations of those fairy tales so I'm really interested to see how the final book brings all the threads together. Looking forward to reading that soon. If you haven't come across Bethany Atasada, she's an author tuber, she's self-published and I just really like the way she writes and the way she adapts these really familiar stories to be something quite different. Yeah, looking forward to finishing that series soon. Next I finished Me and White Supremacy by Leila F. Saad. I picked this up because they were doing a book group for it in college. I actually wasn't able to attend any of the sessions in the end but I decided to work through it at my own pace. It's got like daily 
readings and questions and reflections. I took it a bit more slowly because I really wanted to give it the attention it was worth. So I took my time over it just so that I knew that I'd be in the right headspace to really reflect on these questions. And yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in here. It's not my favourite book that I've read on the topic. I think Emma Dabiri in What White People Can Do Next and Ibram X. Kendi in How to Be an Anti-Racist and Austin Channing Brown in I'm Still Here are all takes on it that I've found slightly better from my perspective but still very much worth a read I think. I gave this one three and a half stars which reflects that but I liked that it was kind of more interactive that it really did make you stop and think and reflect whereas those other ones are more based on the author's experiences and make you reflect in that way. If you are trying to learn more about white privilege and particularly a white person trying to challenge that in themselves this is a helpful book so I gave it three and a half stars. Next I finished a book called Mount Fuji and Mount Sinai by Kosuke Koyama. He was a Japanese theologian and this book was looking at kind of the aftermath of the nuclear bombs dropped on Japan in the Second World War and what that said about Japan as a nation and their spirituality, comparing that to Western spirituality. This was super interesting and some of it was a bit complex and went a little bit over my head so definitely one I want to reread. It was written in the 80s I think but still a lot of really relevant stuff and because I don't know that much about Japanese or Asian spirituality in general and particularly from a Christian theologian how that has impacted on his understanding of Christian theology. I found that really really interesting so I gave that one four and a half stars. I then finished Secrets She Left Behind by Diane Chamberlain. This was the second book in the Before the Storm series. I only gave this two stars. It was another book that I didn't really enjoy. I wanted to read it to kind of know the follow-up to the characters in the first book but it wasn't great. I mean, I didn't enjoy the first book as much rereading it as I did when I first read it. And I think just this type of book isn't for me anymore. I used to really love this melodrama family saga type book, but the characters were just came across even more annoying in this one than in the first one. I had issues. I had a lot of issues with it. So yeah, I only gave that one two stars and probably won't be picking up anything else by Diane Chamberlain. But for some people, they'll love her books. Anyway, we're now into May. So Secrets She Left Behind was the first book I finished in May. So the next book that I finished in May was actually I'm Still Here by Austin Channing Brown, which I just mentioned. I gave this one five stars. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I've listened to podcasts where Austin Shannon Brown has been a featured guest and I find her really engaging. This book just was really really excellent. I was really struck by certain elements of it particularly she talks about how she came to have the name that she has and why her parents chose that name for her. It just highlighted so many ways that the world has been structured to exclude people. Specifically in this case people who aren't white but you can also see other elements of people that aren't male, <laughs> people that aren't able-bodied and she touches on some of those things as well. Yeah I thought this was just brilliant and one of the best books I've read on the topic of white supremacy, white privilege and one that I would really really recommend and it's quite short as well and she has a really engaging writing style so while it's a challenging read it's not a difficult read if that makes sense. So I say gave that one five stars. I then finished The Embroidered Book by Kate Hartfield. This was one I had from NetGalley for review and there will be a review coming for it at some point. I don't know when <laughs> but there will be and this was released in February I think. It took me a long time to get through. I ended up giving it three stars. There were some really good elements to it. It's kind of historical fantasy. It's set in 18th century Europe and follows Marie Antoinette and her sister whose name I can't remember who was Queen of Naples but imagines what their lives would have been like if they were able to do magic. The magic system in it was really interesting as well. I thought it was quite an interesting insight into these two quite important female historical figures and there were some great references like I remember because I'm a big fan of Hamilton when Lafayette made a cameo I was like Lafayette anyway so there were some elements of this book that I really enjoyed I just found it a bit of a slog to get through and part of the issue definitely for me was that it was written in third person present tense which just is really hard 
to do right. There are very few authors that I think that can pull that off and Kate Hartfield just is a one of them in my view. But as I say, full review hopefully for that coming at some point, possibly soon. Who knows? So that one got three stars. I then read two books, very very short books, for an assignment I was doing about mental health for college, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. One was called Building Resilience in Young People by Liz Edge and Hannah Dengate, and I gave that three and a half stars. The other one was called Understanding Self-Harm by Helen Ruth Thorne, and I gave that one four stars. They were only very very short about 30 pages each and I picked them up as I say for an assignment I was doing on Christian approaches to mental health. Some really useful elements in both of them. I have quite a good background in mental health and quite a good understanding of it so particularly the building resilience one was maybe at a more introductory level than I would use but there was still some pretty helpful stuff in there for my assignment. Okay next I finished a book called Good Intentions by Kazim Ali. This was contemporary romance but it was quite bittersweet. It was really interesting actually. The male protagonist was Muslim but from a South Asian background and the female protagonist was Muslim from an African background and it kind of charted their relationship but was told across a couple of timelines which was quite cleverly done and kind of looked at colorism within the Muslim community and unacknowledged bias and how someone can set out to do things for good reasons, that's where the title comes from, Good Intentions. The male protagonist, whose name I can't remember, all of his decisions are based on good principles, but actually he ends up really hurting people because of it. <laughs> so I thought it was really good. It was again, was written in third person present tense. It was okay, like it didn't bother me quite so much in a contemporary as it does in a historical fiction, I don't know why that is. I gave it three and a half stars and I would recommend it and I'd look out for more by Kazim Ali. I think he's quite a good good writer. So yeah, quite enjoyed that one. I then read Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I gave this one four stars. This was another one I picked up for the Last Tree book club. I don't think I'd actually read any Neil Gaiman before this. I quite enjoyed it, as I said, gave it four stars. I thought the concept was really clever about like these two overlapping worlds. London Above and London Below, I think they were called. I thought it was really cleverly done. Urban fantasy, lots of magic in it, which I liked. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say about it. I gave it four stars and I would read more by Neil Gaiman. Next, I read Far From The Light Of Heaven by Tade Thompson. This was our Space Arons pick for, I think it was May. Anyway, I will link our discussion for it. <laughs> In the description for you. I gave this one three and a half stars. This is sci-fi. It's kind of a closed mystery and there were elements of it that I really liked but elements of it that I didn't think were done quite so well. I think again this one was in third person present tense. I think I had a series of books in a row that were written in third person present tense and I was really struggling <laughs> by the end of it. Yeah some bits that I really liked like this whole concept of space travel closed environment. Basically the initial premise is the pilot of a long distance space flight. It's her first flight and she is woken up early because one of the passengers who were all in cryogenic sleep has been murdered and she's got to figure out what happened and like basically the AI has gone a bit loopy and loads of stuff and like anything to do with AI's not functioning the way you hope they would <laughs> like I love that sort of thing so yeah there were some elements I really liked about it I think I was just a little bit disappointed with that outplay of the mystery plot that didn't quite work for me but if you want more of our thoughts on it then check out our live show which will be linked for you. So I gave that one three and a half stars. The next book that I read in May was The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed this. Of the Chinese inspired fantasy books that I read in this four month period, this one was my favourite. I really liked the protagonist, Rin, is that her name? I can't remember. This kind of bullshit, no one really expects much of me so I'm going to prove everyone wrong kind of attitude. That makes her a little bit ruthless and actually in a lot of ways she was quite an unlikable character but I still rooted for her and that's something that I think is really clever when authors can do that. I prefer character driven books but I have to be able to root for the characters and so actually it doesn't matter whether their characters are likeable or not so long as I'm on their side. So the fact that this was actually in some ways quite an unlikable character by the end of the book but I was still rooting for her. I'm really interested to see where the series 
goes. I've had really mixed things about the last book but yeah hopefully picking up the next one fairly soon from the library once I've got my current library loans down a little bit. Very much enjoyed that and looking forward to carrying on the series so I gave that one four stars. The next book that I finished was The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. Jenny Colgan is fast becoming a favourite author. She's a romance writer, primarily contemporary romance. I have also recently, won't be in this video, read a sci-fi romance by her under the name Jenny T. Colgan. But yes, this was really, really sweet. It's about Nina, who's been made redundant. She's a librarian and she's made redundant and she manages to rescue all the books from her library, which is being closed and buys a van and sets up a little traveling bookshop in the Scottish Highlands. And it's just adorable. So much to love about this book. It's the first in a series, so I think the second one follows one of her friends. I have the second one, I think there's the third one as well, but anyway. I found Nina a really relatable protagonist, which was probably part of the reason why I enjoyed it. Someone who's sometimes more happy in the company of books than people. <laughs> so I gave this one four and a half stars. I really enjoy Jenny Colgan. I have a couple of other of her books that I own and I've also hunted down at the library and she's the type of author that if I see her book in a charity shop I will buy it these days. Looking forward to reading more from her. So that was the last book I finished in May I believe. Yes it was and so now on to June and I didn't read quite as much in June so <laughs> hopefully we will get through the rest of these pretty quickly because this is turning into quite a long video. Here we go okay so the next book that I I finished was The Messalina of the Suburbs by E.M. Delafield. This one I picked up because I heard about it on a bookish podcast that I like called Tea and Books. They're going to be comparing this book to another one which I haven't read yet which are both inspired by the same story of a young woman who's married to an older man and then she has an affair and her lover kills her husband and it was like this big scandalous court case that inspired several works. So this is one of the novels that it inspired and the podcast is going to be comparing two of the novels inspired by this story. So this was all right, I gave it three stars. This was my first time reading E.M. Delafield and I didn't love the writing in it. I do have another book by her that I'm looking forward to picking up at some point so we'll see how that one compares. I don't really have a lot more to say about it really than that. It was okay. It was quite short, that was positive. I read it as an ebook, gave it three stars. Interesting to see how it compares to the other one when I get around to reading that. The next book that I finished was The Luster of Lost Things by Sophie Chen Keller. I loved this book. I gave this five stars. This is a really sweet book. It's about a young boy called Walter Lavender. He's about 12, I think, in the book. I can't quite remember. But he has communication disorder that makes it difficult for him to talk to people. He lives with his mother and it's kind of magical realism, fabulism, not quite urban fantasy. It's not as dark as an urban fantasy. His mum runs a bakery but there's just something magical about it and it's all based around this book at the heart of the shop but then one day the book goes missing and Walter has this uncanny ability to find things that have got lost so he starts looking for this book and trying to trace it and he encounters a number of different people in, across New York in the process of this adventure and it helps him to come out of his shell a little bit and it was just really really sweet really adorable so I gave it five stars and would highly recommend it. Okay next I read The Crow Trap by Anne Cleves. This is the first book in the Vera Stanhope series. I have been watching the TV show for a little while my parents got me into it and I quite like it so I thought I'd give the books a go and I quite enjoyed this I gave it four stars it's kind of quite a gritty mystery series and yeah there were lots of elements of this book that I really liked I only vaguely remembered the episode of the tv series that was based on this book which helped because I wasn't then comparing it too much I thought there were lots of really interesting elements yeah, and I found it really, really good. And so I will be looking out for more books by Anne Cleves, both in the Vera Stanhope series and some of her other books as well. I think she's an author that I could really grow to like, so we'll see. And yeah, we'll be carrying on watching the Vera TV show as well. And then once I finish that, I might have to start on Shetland. Next, I read a Caribbean heiress in Paris by Adriana Herrera. This is the first book in the Las Leonas series. This one I had for review from NetGalley, so a full review will be coming of it soon. 
I really enjoyed this. It was a fun historical romance with some really feisty Caribbean protagonists. I gave it three and a half stars. I thought it was really fun. Again, a touch too smutty for my taste, but that actually mostly didn't detract from my enjoyment. I thought the subplot about the male protagonist's family and his battle with his father was really interesting and kind of some of the intrigue around that I thought was really cleverly done and I would pick up more from this series and more from this author so that's a hot tip I highly recommend this series and a full review will be coming over soon and I gave this one three and a half stars. Next I read I love this book The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. I finally finished it I finally finished the series, the Wayfarer series. I loved it. I gave it five stars. One of the characters in this book has appeared in some of the other books, which I thought was really lovely and kind of completed the cycle of taking us back to some of the themes that were in the first book. But what I really loved about this was that one of the alien species represented was a really marginalised society in that you can see how the universe the galaxy <laughs> and the galactic communion whatever they call themselves i can't remember it was not designed for their people and i thought that was really clever and there was a really interesting conversation which really resonated with me a speaker who is the akarak character that's the marginalized alien race she has a disability and she talks about how she met a doctor who could have essentially cured her and she chose not to take that cure because of her confidence in herself and that just really spoke to me when i read it as to so much of this book becky chambers characters are just so good <laughs> So much of this book I really really loved and I'm going to be rereading the series over and over and everything that Becky Chambers writes because she's amazing and I love her and I love this book so I gave it five stars unsurprisingly. I then finished two other books I'd picked up for that same assignment I mentioned earlier about mental health. One was called Crying for the Light by Veronica Zundel. This was a series of daily readings from someone who has experienced quite severe depression, her prayers and her reflections on it and that I found really powerful so I gave that one five stars and then the other one was called Psychology, Religion and Mental Health by Montague G. Barker. This was from a lecture series from 1995 around those topics. I gave that one four stars, it was very interesting, some elements were really useful for my assignment. Okay this takes us into July so we're nearly there, not too much longer to go. Okay so next I read Duckling by Eve Amesworth. So this book came out earlier this year. It's kind of a contemporary mystery but it was quite light mysteries. Main character Lucy I think her name is. She's led quite an insular life, she's had quite a troubled background and then one day her neighbour asks her to keep an eye on her daughter for a couple of hours but then doesn't come back so Lucy finds herself looking after this little girl and trying to figure out what's happened to her mum. It's another of those books similar to The Luster of Lost Things where someone who's quite isolated Isolated, finds our world expanded by opening up to the people around her and I really enjoyed it I gave it five stars again I found Lucy quite a relatable character I don't know what that says about me all these characters that I'm finding quite relatable anyway I really enjoyed it I would really recommend it I thought it was very beautifully written next I read The Governess Game by Tessa Dare I didn't realize this is actually the second in a series but it's a romance series so it doesn't matter too much not reading it in order it was all right I gave it three stars again a touch too smutty for my tastes and some elements of the plot I found slightly unreal realistic that not necessarily the right word but sometimes I'm finding some romance books I question would people really act that way but that's probably the demisexual in me talking. <laughs> One element of this book that I really liked was the wards of the duke character who are his nieces I think and the younger one has this doll she calls Millicent who every morning has apparently died a horrible death and they have to have a funeral for her and I just thought that touch this 
little girl's interest in like disease and yeah I thought it was really fun so yeah there were some elements of this book I really liked I would probably read more by Tessa Darrow I might check out the other books in this Girl Meets Duke series but I'm not sure yeah it was all right so I gave it three stars next I finished She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan this was our Space Sirens book club pick for July or maybe June this one was maybe June actually but I didn't quite finish it in time for June I actually had an e-arc of this before it came out from NetGalley which I hadn't got around to reading so I will be reviewing it soon but if you want to know more Space Sirens thoughts I will link the live show for you I actually wasn't able to take part in the live show partly because I hadn't finished the book this was the third book in this period that I read that was a uh, fantasy inspired by Chinese history there were some elements that I did really enjoy and some less so so I ended up giving it three and a half stars the pacing didn't quite work for me in some places similarly to the poppy war the protagonist was quite unlikable particularly by the end of the book but I didn't quite root for them in the same way that I did for written in the poppy war so yeah it was enjoyable I think it's only a duology so I probably will pick up the sequel it was fine so I gave it three and a half stars next I read the drawer of the sea by Will Men Mur. I'm not sure I've said that name correctly this was non-fiction and it comes out later in the year so again this was an arc I had from NetGalley so I will have a full review of it coming soon. I really enjoyed this, I gave it five stars, it was just a series of reflections about the sea and why as humans we are drawn to the sea and living in coastal areas and he meets various people who the sea is interlinked with their daily lives whether that's through their work or through their pastimes yeah it was just really enchanting <laughs> so I very much enjoyed it and a few, full review of that will be coming soon. I then read a book called Bathsheba by Torgny Lindgren this was published in the 80s the author is Swedish it was a prize winner in some important literary prize at the time I read this because it's kind of a comparison book for the books that I'm doing my PhD on. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> it was really quite brutal and graphic in places. Yeah, I only gave it two stars. I'm gonna have to reread it as well, which I'm not looking forward to, but never mind. I then read a very, very short book called The Girl in the Converse Shoes by Yaritza Garcia. It's a short, like, it's a short story that I had as an ebook, and if I'd realised how short it was, I would have read it a long time ago. It's very sweet, contemporary kind of romance, young adult. Gave it three and a half stars. I think if it had been longer and there'd been more opportunity for character development, it probably would have got a higher rating, but yeah, it's hard to give a rating on a book that is basically five pages. Then I finished the Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffey. This one was for Read Around the World. The author is from Trinidad. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. It was kind of uh, magical realism based around the mermaid myths of the Caribbean. David, a fisherman, sings when he's out fishing and meets a mermaid, but she's then captured by some American tourists and he rescues her and it's just about how their relationship develops and how this affects everyone else on the island where he's from. I thought it was really cleverly written, really really interesting and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed how the relationships between different characters played out and yeah I thought it was really beautiful so I gave it four stars. And next I read Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. This was for Space Sirens for I think this must have been our July book. I gave this five stars I loved it. I will link the Space Sirens discussion for it again I couldn't take part in the discussion but if you want more Space Siren -y thoughts go check that out. This is middle grade fantasy, urban fantasy. The main character Amari joins this kind of magical summer school invited by her brother who's gone missing and so part of the reason she joins is to try and figure out what happened to her and she finds out that the world is much more complicated than she realised. I thought it was really really beautifully written. Amari was a great character, some really big issues covered but in a really accessible way for a middle grade audience and I thought it was really really good and I'm looking forward to carrying on that series. My goodness this is a long video. Then <laughs> I read A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. I picked this up because it's a literary retelling 
telling of Greek myths based around the siege of Troy. I gave it three and a half stars. I thought it was pretty good but I didn't love it. I really liked some of the characterization, some of the way the story was told across different timelines and focusing on different characters and certainly was a more enjoyable retelling of the siege of Troy for me personally than say the song of Achilles had been because this was told much more from the women's perspectives. Lots of things that I enjoyed about it, some things that I didn't gave it three and a half stars. The next book I also gave three and a half stars which was Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christine Lauren. This was my first time reading something by Christine and Lauren. It's contemporary romance, I thought it was really fun. I really liked the two protagonists Hazel is like the sunny quirky character, Josh is more serious but their interplay I thought was really clever, really fun. I liked their kind of wider network as well, and their friends and family and their interactions and yeah there was a lot I really enjoyed about this book and like the smart level for me was okay <laughs> compared to some of the other ones I've read. Yeah so a lot I enjoyed about it, I'd pick up more by Christine Lauren and I gave it three and a half stars. And then we're on the last one, hooray! Finally! <laughs> the final book I read in July, the final book I'm talking about in this video, was Internment by Samira Ahmed. I gave this one three and a half stars. This is kind of a near future dystopian and is based on what could have happened if a certain person had had a second term as American president. A lot of it felt really real and shines a light on aspects of American history, like the way Japanese people were treated during the Second World War that I think a lot of people wouldn't be aware of. When people think about the Second World War, they think about the concentration camps in the Nazi Germany and the places they invaded. But actually America had kind of concentration camps and Britain did as well where we put all the people that we weren't quite sure what to do with because their ancestry was the same as our enemies. And perhaps we didn't treat them quite as badly as Nazis treated the Jews but that is still an element of our history that we need to look at. So this kind of is a modern take on that. The main character Layla and her family are put in a internment camp for Muslim Americans and it was really realistic. It's the kind of thing that you could really imagine happening in a more national nationalistic, fascistic country that you can see elements of in America and in Britain. So yeah, lots of really good elements of this book. I found Layla as protagonist quite frustrating at times. She's one of those protagonists that you're not quite sure how she survives to the end of the book, but there's some really important messages in this book. So I probably won't reread it, I probably won't keep it. We have a little free library near me, probably where this book is gonna go because I think it's, it actually has some really important concepts for people to read. So I gave it three and a half stars. That was all the books I read between the beginning of April and the end of July. So thank you for watching if you've managed to survive to the end of the video, well done. Let me know if you read any of these books and what you thought of them. Let me know some of what you you've read recently or if you just want to let me know that you've made it to the end of the video you can leave me a napping emoji because I feel like I want to sleep now. You can also like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you would like to see more from me and you can also follow me on my social media all that information will be listed for you in the description box below but that's it for now so thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!